The Hungarian GP has officially started with our first upgrades of the weekend and talking about the big parts the teams have brought here. There's also a lot of talk around the rumor mill. Kevin Magnussen has now recently talked about being dropped from Haas. He will be here till the end of the season, but it looks like Alcon is going to be taking his place. And there was a dilemma also with Alcon going to Williams for half the season, but Alpine declined them. Red Bull also has their biggest package they've brought all season coming here to Hungary. And we got changes from a lot of other teams that we're about to go over very soon. Right before getting into it, I wanted to thank you guys for the support. We're killing it. Your guys' support means everything and it really pushes the channel even further and further. So thank you so much for that. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. We got a big goal to reach by the end of the year. So let's keep it going. And let's get started with the rear wings as we usually do for the Hungry GP. First four teams we're looking at is Red Bull, Mercedes, Ferrari, and McLaren. And the first thing you're gonna notice for every single rear wing here, it is super high downforce. Now, most of the wings that you actually see are pretty much Monaco specs. There are revisions done to it, like on the Red Bull, the Mercedes also has a slight revision done as well. These could be classified as upgraded parts, maybe circuit specific if you want to get into it. Ferrari and McLaren's rear wings are the same, but let's go over the downforce specs and what's changed. For the Red Bull, we're going for a super high downforce rear wing here. That's because it's much better to have the downforce over the straight line speed. There's one straight here. You need to have a car that's planted to the ground, and it's critical that you can actually go around these corners with a great balance. For the Red Bull and the Mercedes, Mercedes also has a super high downforce rear wing, as I said, pretty much a Monaco spec. They have a very cambered lower plane, meaning that the lower plane of their rear wing is on an upward angle, and particularly the central part of these rear wings are on that upward angle to give the team a bit more downforce and load on the rear part of the car, which is very important for, first of all, tire wear here in Hungary, but also driver confidence to be able to pull it off. Just another addition added to what seem to be those teams that are within that top three. It's the little parts that matter, and the more downforce they can get on the rear, the better. As for Ferrari, we've seen the same rear wing in Monaco. Not much has changed to it. They do have a new floor here we're going to go over, but the team in general is trying to optimize for the weekend as much as possible. It should be a much better weekend than they've had as of recently. McLaren is also using their Monaco downforce rear wing. Nothing has changed. There aren't much revisions to the McLaren. They have the best car, so they don't really have to go for extreme changes as of right now. Next four teams to look into is Aston Martin, Alpine, Sauber, and Haas. Now these four teams, with the exception of Sauber, are pretty close in who's gonna get that last points paying position and who has a possibility of catching the top four. The Aston Martin rear wing is another high downforce rear wing, as we saw with the other four. You're gonna see that consistently with all of the rear wings we've seen today. They're all high downforce, as much downforce as you can pretty much get out of them. But yet again, we see on the Alpine that the lower plane is cambered, has that upward angle towards the central part of the rear wing, trying to give that team more load towards the back for a better balance. Now, the engine power here doesn't really matter. This is where Alpine can really shine. Aston Martin also would have had a great Monaco qualifying if it wasn't for Alonso getting caught up in the traffic. So those are two teams to really look out for. I do think Haas is going to struggle a little bit more here. Sauber has some upgrades to go over. Maybe it could possibly get them up, but they did very well last year in Hungary as well. Quickly, just to note, this was what was talked about for the McLaren and the whole entire thing going between Red Bull and McLaren. It was this piece that's covered up with the tape. McLaren covered this when the FIA told them about what was going on with the investigation with Red Bull because Red Bull thought this piece was open during races, which would not be legal. And it seems from the FIA checks that everything is okay. As you can see now, this is the break of the McLaren here in Hungary, closed up, nothing really to go over. And I don't think there will be more discussion about this. Williams is another team that's talked about upgrades coming here. From what I've seen in the pictures so far, I have not seen anything that's significant on the car. What I will say is on the engine cover, that's a bit more cooling than I have seen from it, but that's the only thing of note here. I wonder if they've delayed those upgrades because there was big talks from James Vowell saying this should be a big package coming here to Hungary. Maybe it's possibly now brought to Spa. First team's upgrades to go over is Sauber, and as you can see, they have changed the side pod inlet. And if you've sticked with the channel for long enough, you've heard me talk about that Sauber has constantly talked about this overbite side pod that should be coming to the car and that it's going more down a Red Bull aero philosophy and this is part of it. We've now seen it with the Haas, we've obviously seen it with the McLaren and Red Bull 
and now they've brought that same piece now it's not within the side impact structure like it is with the mclaren but it is an overbite on the sauber we do have a couple of more pictures of this as you can see from this angle here as well shows you a bit more of that overbite very similar to the red bull at least in the style that it's done it seems like the actual inlet is bigger than on the red bull so maybe they need more engine cooling for that ferrari rather than the honda but you can also see that they closed up where they usually have cooling on that side pod part and if you look more closer towards the rear of this side pod where we go into the slide part of the side pod it's more slimmed out than it was before, trying to direct the flow towards a specific direction more than it used to. If you guys watched the video from Saturday, then you know that Aston Martin are also bringing parts here as well. This is that Hungry GP package, a little bit closer up and we can see better details on what they did on that Halo design that we already saw on the SF24. Nothing more to talk about here. Obviously, this is just to dictate the airflow coming off of the Halo and coming off of the nose as well to be more directed towards that slide pod that they have, which required them to make a revision to that part as well as the fin that's on the top of the Halo. This does also then get into a slightly revised engine cover. As you can see with this line right here, there is a bit of a revision done onto it. It's really hard to tell as you go more towards the rear part of the car in this picture with the rear wing, you can't see too much of it. It's slightly revised just to help the airflow, but also the floor here that's pictured is the floor they've been using in Silverstone and what was a Suzuka spec of the floor that helped them out in Silverstone. But what they might do is that in FB1, they'll use this floor spec and then the one that we had leaked from the Silverstone test will probably be put onto another car to see how it's working. What this tells me is that they're still unsure about this upgrade and it'll be very interesting to see what happens with the team. I really hope there is some actual progress made here because Alonso has scored in Hungary every single year he's literally raced in Formula One. So it would shock me if they don't have a car strong enough to at least get points, regardless of whether it's gonna be hot temperature or not. As for Ferrari, the first picture that I have here is the engine cooling. It's gonna be a big deal for every single team here. We're gonna see it maximized. I'll go over other teams as well, but for the Ferrari, it's a nice detailed picture of their beautiful engine cover. The team does have two different front wing specs here, just like they did in Silverstone. We see the front wing from the beginning of the season towards the bottom, and then the front wing on the top is the one they brought in Imola. So it's possible that they test both of them to see how it works with their new floor spec that's coming here. Looking at this picture, we can see the floor and we can see that the car is reverted now to the Spain spec in comparison to what it was in Silverstone on Carlos's car, which was the Imola spec. So they're going back to the Spanish GP upgrades for the floor as well as the side pod design and the engine cover. What's important to know is probably what's under the car. We can't see that as of right now. There's probably revisions done there to maybe give them a little bit less downforce so they don't have to worry as much about the bouncing. Apparently there's too much downforce being given to the floor aspect of the car, which is forcing that bouncing. That's at least what's being talked about from Vasseur. So there is a change done under where we really can't see, but from the top, it's that exact same Spanish GP spec with not much revisions. The only thing that I can kind of point out but this is just off of eye test, is the part where the side impact structure is, it does seem to be a bit smaller than I've seen on the car before. Also important to note, specifically looking at Ferrari, if you look at the beam wing setup, it will be very high downforce for every single team towards the rear part of the car. Right here, they use the exact same spec in Monaco, they're using it again for the downforce towards the rear. Looking at this picture at Red Bull, who is bringing their biggest package here of the year, this is said to be visible for the team, but we do have a nice picture of the floor that was brought in Silverstone. And as you can see, that first part of those Venturi tunnels has that cut out, but it's less dramatic than it used to be on the car. And I wonder if that will help them much more here in the slower speed corners, which has been, if you can call a weakness in the car, at least inherently from the 2022 season to now. And will it help them with their curb problem? That's another big thing to go over. But here's finally our first view of the dramatic update on the RB20, which sees a complete change in the engine cover and even the way the side pods work now with the engine cover. We knew this was going to be a big update, but this is definitely a huge one to the degree of what teams have brought, at least in 2024. And the information from also Dr. Obbs, who talks about this and seems like he has a contact over there with Red Bull, saying that this engine cover 
is actually something that is track specific, believe it or not, and it will be swapped out between races. In Spa, we will see the spec, the higher downforce spec, but then in races like Hungary and probably going into Singapore where you need the downforce, this will be the engine cover version they use. So we will still see those high shoulders with that extreme design, but this design we will see on the higher downforce tracks. From the looks of it, it looks to be dictating more airflow towards the bottom of the car to give it more suction towards the floor, as well as bringing it more over the beam wing instead of the rear wing like the high gully was. If this update doesn't do what Red Bull wants, that would be an extreme look in the mirror from what Adrian Newey wanted with this car. It has been talked about now that the cooling setup on this car is definitely not what Adrian wanted. So let's see if this update package works. What an extreme view. It almost looks like the RB18 in somewhat of a way with no shoulders at all on the car, which makes me very interested to see how it will perform here in Hungary. A cool picture of the Mercedes showing you the side impact structure in the car. This is how it internally looks before the pieces are actually put onto it. One is put pretty much where that side pod inlet is. And then that bottom piece is what we see on all these cars where the floor is kind of bumped out, but every team is using the side impact structure purposefully to have that bump in the floor to dictate the airflow going towards the rear part of the car or however they want to dictate it, whether it be outwash towards the side or towards the back rear part of the car under the undercut. We do now see with the part that's been talked about and even I made a whole entire video about it with the suspension setup that it is now cooling being opened for it. But we have also seen that it wasn't open for the past couple of GPs. They do need the cooling now for it, maybe to help out with that heave damper setup. But we do know that these pieces now and as upgrades come more and more, it will be more mechanical than it is aero because right now, at least what we're going into with the 2025 season, it's going to be way less visual parts and more in-depth about the mechanical pieces that will make the car more stable and just a better overall ride. Visually looking at the car, nothing has changed. You can see that they've obviously opened up as much engine cooling as they can. On the side pod, you see the cooling. You do see this extreme engine cover gill setup as well. And they have now started to use this part of the engine cover. They've had two different specs. One was brought in Miami, one they had in the beginning of the season. But as you can see, the shoulders of this engine cover are a bit more defined than they usually are on the car. And it's been something they've been using lately instead of the older piece that they had. But that's going to do it for our upgrades going into Hungary. It's a big weekend, kind of like Imola, as I've stated before. Spain was also another one of those weekends. It will be very important to see where teams line up here. Will that big Red Bull package actually make an impact on the team? But if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe. It would mean the world. And peace.